It's so hot guys, and so is the issue of a granny farm in a country, the Philippines. Let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Ma Francis Villegas Buisan, a first year civil engineering student and a student of RPH class under Ma'am June Miriam Saison Pilinio. And now, you are in His Story Podcast. First, let us talk about the concept of agrarian reform and why did our government enact it. So what is the concept of agrarian reform? The concept of agrarian reform aimed at modernizing the feudal structure of southern agriculture by expropriating the most unproductive portions of the large estates and redistributing them to landless peasants in the form of small holdings. And why did our government install it? The Agrarian Reform Law aims to promote social justice and industrialization, providing the mechanism for its implementation and for other purposes. It also sought to redistribute land not only to farmers and farm workers, but also to the other landless poor. Who is Elpidio Quirino? Elpidio Rivera Quirino was a Filipino lawyer and politician who served as the sixth president of the Philippines from 1948 to 1953. A lawyer by profession, Quirino entered politics when he became a representative of Ilocosur from 1919 to 1925. He was then elected a senator from 1925 to 1935. In 1934, he became a member of the Philippine Independence Commission that was sent to Washington, D.C., which secured the passage of the tidings not duffy Act to American Congress. For those who don't know, the tidings McDuffie Act was established to replace the Insular Government, a United States Territorial Government. The Commonwealth was designed as a transitional administration in preparation for the country's full achievement of independence. During Quirino's term, he enacted the following law. Executive Order No. 355 issued on October 23, 1950 replaced the National Land Settlement Administration with Land Settlement Development Corporation or also known as LACIDECO, which takes over the responsibilities of the Agricultural Machinery Equipment Corporation and the Rice and Corn Production Administration. So what does LACIDECO do? The LACIDECO shall have the following powers, duties, and functions. Number one, to facilitate the acquisition settlement and cultivation of agricultural lands. Number two, to afford the opportunity to own farms to tenant farmers and small farmers from congested areas to graduates of agricultural schools and colleges, to trainees who have completed the prescribed military training, to veterans and members of the guerrilla organization, and to other persons as may be determined by the board of directors with approval of the secretary of economic coordination. Number three, to encourage migration to sparsely populated regions and facilitate the amalgamation of, of the people in different sections of the Philippines. Number four, to acquire by grant from the Republic of the Philippines and restricted areas of public agricultural lands in order to carry out its objectives, to survey, to subdivide, and set aside slots of areas of such lands for farming, town sites, roads, parks, government centers, recreational centers, and other public and civic improvements, and to dispose of farm lands and town, and town site lots to persons qualified and to the extent of areas authorized under the Cons- Constitution and the Public Land Act, subject to such other qualifications and to process, terms, and conditions as may be prescribed by the Board of Directors with the approval of the Secretary of Economic Coordination that proceeds from disposition of the same to accrue the corporation. Number five, to establish and operate credit agency, electric light and water plants, water supplies, irrigation systems, cooperative to engage in the buying and selling of commodities and other services or inconveniences for the well-being of the settlers. Number six, 
to encourage mechanized farming, to operate tractor and agricultural machinery, machinery pools, and to maintain training centers for the operation and repair of the agricultural machinery, tractors, and the like. Number seven, to assist in the establishment of agricultural and other vocational schools within the areas under its territorial jurisdiction and to allocate definition portions of farmlands and townsite lots with a view to enabling students successfully finishing courses prescribed inside agricultural and vocational schools to eventually acquire little thereto. Number eight, to do all such other things and to transact all such business directly or indirectly necessary, incident, incidental or, con or conducive to their attainment of the purposes of the corporation and number nine generally to exercise all the powers of a corporation under the corporation law in so far as they are not inconsistent with the provisions of this order through the executive order number 355 the land settlement development corporation or lasadeco was established to accelerate and expand the peace and resettlement program of the government however Due to the limit, limited post-war resources, the program was not successful. Who is Ramon Magsaysay? Ramon Del Ferro Magsaysay Sr. was a Filipino statesman who served as the 7th President of the Philippines from December 13, 1953 until his death in an aircraft disaster. An automobile mechanic by profession, Magsaysay was appointed military governor of Zambales after his outstanding service as a guerrilla leader during the Pacific War. He then served two terms as Liberal Party Congressman for Zambales at a large district before being appointed Secretary of National Defense by President Elpidio Crino. He was elected President under the banner of the Nacionalista Party. He was the first Philippine President born in the 20th century and the first to be born after the Spanish colonial era. Did President Magsaysay pursue land reform during his term? Well, yes. President Magsaysay realized the importance of pursuing a more honest to goodness land reform program. He convinced the elite controlled Congress to pass several legislation to improve the land reform situation to wit. RA number 1199 Agricultural Tenancy Act basically governed the relationship between landholders and tenant farmers. This law helped to protect the tenural rights of tenant dealers and enforce fair tenancy practices. RA number 1160, Free Distribution of Resettlement and Rehabilitation and Agricultural Land and an Act of Establishing the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration, or also known as NARA. RA number 1400, Land Reform Act, or known as the Land to the, Land, Land to the Landless Program, which sought improvement in land tenure and guaranteed expropriation of all tenanted landed estates. And lastly, RA number 1266, Expropriation of Hacienda del Rosario, situated at Valde Fuente, Cabanatuan City. And when you say expropriation, it is the act of a government in claiming a privately owned property to be used for the benefit of the overall public. How did he implement it? The Agricultural Tenancy Act. He established the Court of Agricultural Relations in 1955 to improve tenancy security, fix the land rentals on tenanted farms, and to resolve the many land disputes filed by the landowners and peasant organizations. He also created the Agricultural Tenancy Commission to administer problems arising from tenancy. Through this commission, 28,000 hectares were issued to settlers. What were this administration's key support programs on agrarian reform? Under this administration, the Agricultural Credit and Cooperative Financing Administration or ACFA was created. This is a government agency formed to provide warehouse facilities and assist farmers to market their products and establish the organization of the farmers' cooperatives and marketing associations or FACOMAS. 
with the passing of RA 1160 of 1954, President Magsaysay pursued the resettlement program to the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration or NARA. This law established the government resettlement program and, ac and accelerated the free distribution of agricultural lands to landless tenants and farmers. It particularly aimed to convince members of the Hook Balahap movement to, re to return to a peaceful life by giving them home lots and farmlands. This administration spearheaded the establishments of the Agricultural and Industrial Bank to provide easier terms in applying for homestead and other farmland. Did these interventions improve the land ownership and tenancy situation? Out of the targeted 300 agendas for distribution, only 41 were distributed after its seven years of implementation. This was due to lack of funds and inadequate support services provided for these programs. Landlords continued to be uncooperative and critical to the, to the program, and, and land ownership and tenancy problems continued. After 73 years after Ramon Magdasay passed the laws, it actually brought good impacts in our country. It increases per capita incomes, reduced poverty incidents, higher investments in physical capital, and greater household welfare and productivity were, were reported. Aside from social justice and peace attained in the countryside, and also, the agrarian reform contributed to relieve the unemployment pressure and to increase agricultural production and productivity, although it could not prevent a massive exodus of rural population from the mountains and the most marginal areas. And here is a short video of agrarian reform under Ramon Magsaysay's time. Filipinos had fought and died for hundreds of years. On that day was born the Republic of the Philippines, a sovereign nation of free and independent Philippines. The Philippines is an agricultural country. We have this, and this, and this agricultural land. This country has 30 million hectares and 47% of it was agricultural land. If the Philippines is rich in agricultural land, then why do Filipinos in the agricultural sector experience poverty? But this president changes everything. Meet Ramon Magsaysay, a Filipino statesman who served as the seventh president of the Philippines. Before he became a president, there was a previous president named El Pijocorino who established the Land Settlement Development Order. But sadly, the program was not successful. Ramon Magsaysay put an end to the particular program and established the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration to resettle the landless farmers which was clearly stated in the Republic Act No. 1160 of 1954. The President also established laws like Agricultural Tenancy Act of 1954 and creation of Agricultural Credit Cooperative Financing Administration. But what you'll find out will surprise and amaze you. He distributed rice and corn lands over 200 hectares for individuals and 600 for hectares for corporations. Yes, and you heard it right. He distributed 800 hectares fairly to the nation and it is under the Land Reform Act of 1955. Despite of the problems he encountered, especially the lack of the government funds, he still gave the land to the farmers that they really deserve. Magsaysay was not a champion of the Philippine agriculture for nothing. He gave hopes and success for the Filipino farmers. Still, the agrarian reform policy must be continued for the betterment of the state of agricultural sector. We are still experiencing poverty. And we are hoping and waiting for the Philippines to be called the richest agricultural country of the world. And that would be the end of my podcast. I hope you enjoy and learn something from me. Thank you.